I am very lucky to live on the edge of Bodmin Moor, which is a designated dark sky zone in southwest England. And that means that on a good night, I can stand outside the kitchen and see thousands upon thousands of stars, thanks to very low levels of light pollution. So I was very excited to get some time to play with the Vaunis Stellina. This is a $4,000 plug and play automatic star finding telescope for astrophotography. I'm James Bruce, you're watching Make Use Of Reviews. The Stellina is a massive device which comes with its own tripod and 10,000 milliamp hour battery system, enough for about five hours of use. It is entirely portable and it broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network from which you can connect with your phone or tablet. Now from there, you simply open up the Stellina app, you let it figure out where you are, and then you pick from a list of nebulae, clusters, constellation stars, etc., that you want to see. It'll locate, autofocus, auto track, and photograph the target over a period of 15 minutes to two hours. And that's with automatic image and stacking settings for optimal views of each target. And for the advanced users who wish to track those distant undiscovered alien colonies, you can also target a specific set of coordinates, should you wish to veer off the beaten path. Now, Internally, the Stellina telescope uses a 400mm focal length custom f5 lens with an 80mm aperture. Forgive me if I get this bit wrong, but it's a doublet apochromatic refractor, which as far as I can tell means there should be no chromatic aberrations, so the colours of the stars will not be changed. It even has a built-in heater uh, to avoid issues with dew and misting up. Now all of that feeds into a 6.4 megapixel Sony IMX178 sensor with a city light suppression filter on it. So in theory, even in built up areas, you should still get good images. Now, as I said, I'm not in a built up area, nor do I have any desire to go to one. So for the purposes of this review, just bear in mind, I'm in pretty ideal lighting conditions, though obviously the weather also plays a big part, if not more of a factor than uh, the ambient light. It zooms 50 times in a 1 by 0 0.7 degree field of view, and it has an automatic mechanical field derotator to capture the optimal field of view, meaning it'll spin itself round. It's mounted in alt azimuth configuration, which means it spins and rotates on its axis, and it's powered by a removal 10,000 milliamp hour battery over USB-C, which is fantastic because it means that you can carry another backup uh, if you if you do need, any old battery will do, and you don't need to worry about the device being worthless after five years because the internal battery is shot. So great design choice there. It also features two USB-A ports for memory sticks if you want to save the raw images from the camera, or you can save the final output to your smartphone or tablet device, which is by far the easiest thing to do. Now one thing to note is that its operating temperature bottoms out at around zero degrees C. So those higher up north uh, might not be able to use this to its fullest. So actually using the Stellina is ludicrously simple. And to be clear, I don't have the slightest clue about astrophotography. It's not something I've ever tried. I just don't have the right lenses to try and do something like that, nor the ability to track stars. So this really is something anyone can use. The first thing you'll need to do is mount the Stellina on this third party tripod, which is included in the pack. It's a Gitzo Series 3 systematic carbon fiber and aluminium tripod. It is incredibly stable and easy to affix, and it's also easy to level out thanks to a built in bubble level, so you can get things straight there. Although the box the Stellina comes in has a strong carry handle, it's not really a carry case, and nor does the tripod actually fit in there. I do wish a little more thought had gone into an integrated carrying solution, either a handle on the device itself uh, or some sort of a hard case for the whole thing to go in. But as it is, it's a bit awkward to carry around and of course it's very heavy. So don't plan on trekking up a mountain with it, but putting it in the back of your car to the campsite is certainly an option. Once you've plugged the battery in, there's a single startup button on the front here. Hold that down, then you connect to the internal ad hoc Wi-Fi network and open up the app. It goes through a series of initialization steps. It locates itself with GPS. 
It measures the ambient temperature to ensure the lens is warmed up enough and there's no misting that's going to happen. And it auto focuses on the sky. As long as it's not cloudy, everything will work fine and generally I found that if you can see some stars then it can too. If you can't see any stars it will also just error out and say unable to locate itself properly. After that you can browse the list of objects in the night sky that are currently available to observe. Each object has a recommended observation time for the best image and that's pretty much it. Assuming it can get a lock on the object and doesn't get obscured by clouds, again the weather plays a big part in this, you'll soon begin to see images rolling in and presented as a timeline. So the image will improve uh, as it takes more, it stacks them up. So it starts out with something fairly basic with a very little colour and after 15, 30, even up to 120 minutes for some objects, the image will hopefully get better and better. The app also contains a little blurred out version of what you might expect and some information about that particular object. I like how some of the descriptions were basically just this is a boring cluster of stars with nothing noteworthy, but hey you can look at it if you want. It really is so simple that anyone can do it. If the conditions worsen and Stellina detects that it will actually reject the images so as not to stack up unwanted pixels if a cloud comes into the way. And then if too many in a row are rejected it'll let you know and you can either abort or just keep waiting if you think the clouds will move along quickly. It is incredibly clever and you can get some lovely images out of it. The battery life is more than enough for an evening of stargazing. You can always swap it out if you need to but frankly my iPad died well before on the battery on this did. Interestingly you can also connect more than one smart device to view the output if you have a stargazing group and then only the first device remains in control so that someone else can't accidentally choose a different object. The rest of the devices just get to observe the output so it's, it's great for groups or in schools. The Vaunis Stellina makes astrophotography stupidly simple for anyone. It's plug and play as long as you have good conditions and all you need to do is choose what to look at, guided by the app in terms of what you can currently see, what has good visibility, then just let it do its magic. It's wireless from its own network so you can take it anywhere, especially useful if you're heading up out of the city for a weekend away. Um, it doesn't require internet since it broadcasts its own internal network. It's really the ultimate astrophotography cheat mode. And yeah, the images you get are great. Because of the way it automatically tracks the stars, it stacks less noisy, quicker exposures. So you get a much better overall quality than one massively long exposure where the stars have moved around. Now for those of you who watched this far, here's a mid-review turnaround. The Stellina isn't perfect and to my eyes at least it has some pretty glaring limitations. The first, and I apologise if this is obvious to those of you who are clearly more versed in astrophotography than I am, is that you can't view planets. So if you had dreams of staring at high quality pictures of Saturn's rings, well no. It's just not that kind of lens. It's designed to observe nebulae and clusters mainly. You can point it at planets but the results are disappointingly small. Secondly, the images you get are impressive, but they aren't $4,000 impressive. And while I was blown away by how ridiculously easy it is to use this thing, the opportunities I had to really use it were very infrequent. You obviously can't use it when it's raining, you can't use it when it's cloudy, and you can't use it when the moon is bright. So that's about one night in 30 that was actually suitable to test this at least here in England. I mean don't get me wrong, developing a coherent image of something hundreds of billions of miles away clearly isn't a simple task but nor are you breaking new ground here. You could go onto Google image search and find someone who took it better, like NASA. In a fraction of the time it'll take you to get anything from Stellina. Now to sit there with a telescope, locate a star and look through the eyepiece is one thing or even to align your camera perfectly, track a star, take a stack of images, post process it all. I can imagine it feels like quite an accomplishment to get all that done yourself and I have nothing but respect for anyone who dedicates themselves to frankly any hobby. But with this it's almost too easy. 
When you abstract that whole process out to a long range camera that moves itself, something feels, I don't know, lost in the translation. If you're going to cheat anyway, why not just take it one step further and Google pictures of the galaxies instead? At the selling price of around $4,000, you could buy a DSLR, a massive lens, a tripod, a star finder, and you'd have a lot more adaptable bit of kit than this. It'll be a serious investment of time though, don't get me wrong. Lastly, if you just want to get outside and do some star watching with friends or family, then staring at a smartphone or tablet screen is the last thing you want to do. It'll really wreck your night vision. If I'm gonna have a star watching night, then I might make an exception for one person to use an AR app like Starwalk, so they can then point out the constellations. But sitting there staring at a screen to see images develop is just not my idea of fun. The best way to use it, I found, was to set it up, let it do its thing, and then cover up my iPad, leave it for an hour or so, glance at it to see if there's been any errors, and just check what it developed. Uh, when you're done for the evening. If, like me, you're new to astrophotography, you might have thought that you could use this to whiz around the galaxy, pointing out close-up images of constellations and planets. But astrophotography doesn't work like that. And this thing is more of a slow, deep space camera than a live view telescope. It takes a really long time to develop good images from this. Anyway, Thanks for watching. Do hit like on this review if it told you what you need to know about the Valnis Stellina and whether it's something you or your stargazing group should invest in. Do consider subscribing for more reviews from all of us over at makeusoft.com and until next time, stay safe.